So what we're going to do here today is show you how to connect your Google Calendar with your Todoist. So it looks something like this, or maybe not this cluttered. Uh, that's just me. First things first is we're going to go over to Todoist. My Todoist is full of overdue tasks because this is not the Todoist that I usually use. This is actually an old account of mine because this one's not currently connected to a Google Calendar. So it's pretty cool that Todoist has done this as a two-way integration with Google Calendar, which means you can move things over to Google Calendars and then move them back. So first thing, we're going to go to the gear icon up here and go to settings. And then once that loads over on the left, by the way, you should be doing this on your desktop if possible. It's a lot easier to do on your desktop. It's possible to do on a phone, but we're gonna go down here to the bottom integrations. And this is nice here. Very first thing, enjoy two-way sync between the scheduled to-do's tasks and your Google Calendar. So we're gonna go ahead and click connect here. It's gonna come up and give you some options for your Google account, because Google lets you stay logged in with a bunch of different accounts at once. We're gonna go down and select whatever the right one is. And here we're gonna allow this because like I said, it's a two-way connection. So Todoist edits your calendar and the calendar is going to edit your Todoist. So you wanna hit allow. And it'll take a second here. First thing is to pick a calendar. What this means is it can go directly into your other calendar, but on Google calendars, it allows, you're allowed to have more than one calendar at once. So we're gonna hit the Todoist new, which will just create a new calendar for you. That way you can shut it off if you want and just look at your other calendar events. Now with the sync, we're gonna select just all projects. This is whenever you create an event or move an event on Google Calendar, where will it go? It's either gonna go into specific projects or it's going to go into your inbox, which is basically a project by itself. You're just gonna click inbox for that. That's not really that important. We're gonna set the duration. You can set these to different increments. And I think these are actually the minimum increment. We're gonna do 15 minutes. I usually do 30 minute increments myself, but I wanna see what that, that does. And then this is should tasks that don't have due times be synced to as all day events or should they not be synced at all? This is kind of an issue where if you don't have times on things, Things, they will just come up as all day events or they won't be synced at all. You can choose there how Google Calendar should deal with that issue when it comes up and hit connect. And then there you go, it is connected. And to sync things up, all you have to do is go up here to sync. And you can always find this and sync things up so it updates it and then you're good to go. We're gonna jump over to the Google Calendar now and well, this is a good example of the fact that it doesn't appear right away it looks like uh, the Todoist calendar hasn't showed up over here yet. I refresh the page, there we go. You can see everything's showing up as all day events. So the few things that are showing up are things that I have actual times attached to, but we're gonna show you how to do this. And why this is useful is because you can kind of see how long things are gonna take. You can look at, okay, I have this too much stuff planned in this day or whatever. And really it, it's an incredibly useful tool to make you more productive if you use your actual day as your to-do list. It's flexible, that's what I like about this. Rather than doing it on a piece of paper, this is flexible because I can pick things up and move them around, make them longer, make them shorter, or just move them to a completely different place altogether. So the problem here is that everything is up here in this all day thing where you might think, oh, I can just click and drag these things down down, it's not that easy because if you try to do that, see here, uh, they won't do anything. And on day view, it's the same issue. If you go up to month view, then it's not a big deal because everything's listed out, but that's not really the ideal way to look at this. The week view is the ideal way to look at it. So we're gonna go back here to Todoist and go back to the main page. We're gonna go to today and actually everything's overdue on my old Todoist. So we're just gonna reschedule. This is a really great tool in Todoist, the reschedule. It's not perfect, but it helps a lot. So we have different events here that already have dates on them and we're gonna add days to things. So we're gonna go down here to this one and we're just gonna say today at noon and then hit enter and then we're gonna do the same with this one today at like, I don't know, 2.30 p.m. And you wanna make sure you're hitting p.m. if you're trying to do p.m. because it'll assume a.m. otherwise. And then here we're gonna hit tomorrow at 5 p.m. So we're gonna go back over here. And of course it's not updated yet. It doesn't, it's not perfect. It doesn't update instantaneously. Go over here to settings. This does update. It's just not as quick as I'm making this video. We're gonna hit sync and update and over here. So yeah, this is here and we can move these things around. And you just wanna make sure when you're moving stuff around that that little event save thing pops up because otherwise you'll get ahead of yourself and it'll just all of a sudden pop back into place because you move things too fast. But you can extend things to make them longer, make them shorter, vice versa. There you see I did that. I got a little bit ahead of myself and it popped back. 
um, because I didn't know what to do with it. So the interesting thing is, is if I don't get it done today, then I can plop it over here on Saturday. And this is what I usually do because my Saturdays are usually pretty free. I try to make them free. I can put things on Saturday that I didn't get done during the week for whatever reason. Like here, I have a ton of stuff on Saturday because I have things that pop up all the time, like sales meetings or just regular meetings that I don't expect are going to pop up until they do. So then those tasks have to go somewhere. And instead of just, just scrambling because I don't know where they're going, I put them all over in the right hand column, which is Saturday. And then I come up to the month view and all of those things are there. I also try to organize them by how important they are. I put the more important things earlier in the day on Saturday and then go down the list. So that way when I bring things over to Sunday, which you just click and drag these things over, which you won't be able to see if you have too many all day things. So this is important to not have so many all day things. And then we'll find next week's week and you see they pop up there over on Saturday. And it kind of gives me a nice view because I can see which things are the most important first and I can say, okay, I need to get this done first thing on Monday. So I schedule it at like eight o'clock. Um, and let's say this thing, I know I have a bunch of stuff on Monday that I haven't put in my calendar yet. So I'm gonna maybe throw this at Thursday cause I think that'll be a good time for this to happen. And this can go much more extreme. Um, you can extend things like I said, or make them shorter. And it just, it really starts to fill out and it, it makes you so much more productive because not only are you able to have this to-do list that I know a lot of people like to have on a daily basis, and it's kind of in that list view that's helpful. It's also showing you exactly how long things are gonna be. And then even in the past, you can go back and look and say, okay, this is what I did that day. I try to update it. Even if I don't do something, I make sure to go back and change it or add a task to just know how much I was actually doing or what I was actually doing that time of the day. It's just a nice self-accountability thing. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.